quick revision video on carbonyl compounds. So essentially we're talking about aldehydes and ketones which both contain the carbonyl group C double bond O. So we'll start by looking at the oxidation reactions of carbonyl compounds. So only aldehydes are oxidized, ketones aren't, and these are oxidized to carboxylic acids. The oxidizing agent represented by O in square brackets is acidified potassium dichromate 6 and the acidified conditions come from sulfuric acid. It's carried out under reflux and there's a colour change of orange to green. So the example I'm going to use is the oxidation of propanol and the equation for that reaction looks like this. So we've got propanol plus the oxidising agent makes propanoic acid. So if we move on to the bonding in the carbonyl group now, so essentially around the carbon there we've got three sigma bonds so it's making two sigma bonds here and here and a sigma bond to the oxygen. So that's the direct or end-to-end -end overlap of the orbitals. We've also got a p orbital on the carbon and a p orbital on the oxygen. And just remember p orbital is the entire figure of eight shape, so two lobes, an upper lobe and a lower lobe. And what happens is the p orbitals overlap side to side and that creates pi bond. But because we've got the upper lobe and the lower lobe, we get pi bond formed above and below the plane of the CO bond. So we can summarize that with a diagram like this. So we've got essentially in that C double bond O, a sigma bond and a pi bond. And just a quick reminder that the shape of this is trigonal planar because we've got three pairs of electrons. Remember a double bond counts as one region of electron density. So three pairs of electrons all repelling equally giving us that trigonal planar shape and the bond angle of 120 degrees. The C double bond O is polar, so you notice I've got the dipole across. Oxygen's quite electronegative, more electronegative than carbon, and so it has a greater share of the electron density, so slightly negative, carbon slightly positive. So because of that, the carbonyl bond is attacked by some nucleophiles, and a reminder there that they are electron pair donors. And because we've got a double bond, addition takes place. So the reaction that we're going to look at now is the nucleophilic addition reactions of carbonyls. So the first one we'll look at is the reduction reaction using NaBH4 followed by the addition of water. NaBH4 is a source of H- ions or hydride ions. So the first example we'll look at is the reduction of propanol. So notice that we have two moles of reducing agent and essentially we put one of the H's with this one and the other H there. So H's either side of the O and that gives us this CH2OH group. So we're turning the aldehyde into a primary alcohol. If we look at propanol now, ketone. So similar thing going on, we've got two moles of reducing agent and again we put one hydrogen either side of the oxygen. So we get the CHOH group and so this is a secondary alcohol. Now I've got a silly way to remember this, it's called the oxygen sandwich. So the two moles of reducing agent basically sandwich the oxygen. So either side of the oxygen, the oxygen in the middle. So if we look at the mechanism for this reaction now, so I've got propanone drawn there, I've got the dipole shown across the C double bond door, and the hydride ion represented as H minus, and I'm shown the lone pair of electrons. So the first thing to happen is the pair of electrons is attracted to the slightly positive carbon, and that repels the pi electron pair up onto this oxygen. So that's going to generate this intermediate, so you can see the pi electron pair up here now. Remember we need to bring in water as well, so that comes into play now. And we're going to get a bond forming between this lone pair and the slightly positive hydrogen of the water. 
and that's going to break that bond there by repelling the pair of electrons onto the oxygen. And so the products are, in this case, we get the secondary alcohol and a hydroxide ion. And the nucleophile, the electron pair donor, is the hydride ion. So if we move on to the reaction with HCN now, hydrogen cyanide. Now, HCN is a very, very toxic substance. So the carbon ion will be reacted with a mixture of sulfuric acid and a source of cyanide ions, so something like sodium cyanide. So the product that we're going to get is called a hydroxy nitrile. So we'll use the example of propanol with HCN. But remember the HCN is formed by combining these two chemicals. So there's the reaction. So you can see the H from the HCN is bonding to this oxygen here in the carbonyl group and the CN is joining here to this carbon. So this hydroxynitrile, well we've got one, two, three, four carbons, so it's going to be butane nitrile and we've got a hydroxy group on carbon number two. Remember this is the first carbon because this is the functional group. So this is two hydroxy butane nitrile. Now this is a really useful reaction in organic synthesis because it enables you to extend the carbon chain. So the mechanism for this reaction, so you can see I've got propanol drawn up there and the cyanide ion showing the lone pair, very very similar to before, pair of electrons from the nucleophile is attracted to this carbon, slightly positive carbon, and that's going to repel the pi electron pair of the oxygen. That's going to give us this intermediate. And remember it's HCN, so we need an H plus ion now. And we're going to form a bond between the O lone pair and the H plus. And so the product looks like that. We'll just finish with this, identifying aldehydes and ketones. So the first thing we'll look at is how do you test for the C double bond O? You add Brady's reagent or 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine and you would expect to see an orange precipitate if you've got the carbonyl bond present. So then to find out which aldehyde or ketone you've got, because this only tells us that it is an aldehyde or a ketone, we need to purify this orange precipitate by recrystallization, measure the melting point of this purified derivative and then compare that melting point to known data values and then that will tell us what the original aldehyde or ketone was. And finally, how do you distinguish between aldehydes and ketones? Well, you add Tollens reagent, which is a combination of aqueous ammonia, aqueous silver nitrate and aqueous sodium hydroxide. It's often referred to as ammoniacal silver nitrate. So you would make the Tollens and add it to your sample and put it in a water bath at around about 50 degrees C. And if you get a silver mirror formed, that confirms the presence of the aldehyde group CHO. So the reaction's taking place. Well, the silver ions from the silver nitrate, they gain an electron, so they're reduced to silver atoms and that's the silver mirror. And the aldehyde group is oxidized to the carboxylic acid group. So an example we're going to look at is that for benzaldehyde. So benzaldehyde would be oxidized to benzoic acid.